Hello. Um, I am Dr. AJ Kumar, PhD. Um, I found, I, it occurred to me that I can put the text on the screen and do a left, anyway. Um, so, one of my weak points, as people know, is history. Um, I, I know very, almost nothing about history. Um, anyone who talks to me will know that. I, I just, I, I've, I learned almost nothing about history. Um, and religion, Christianity, that type of thing, I, I know very little about it. Um, so, a bit about my personal history. I, I talked about this in one of the Entropism videos. But, um, I know, I so I was kind of raised atheist, I guess. I, I wasn't really ever taught anything about religion. Um, my parents were biologists, and so I... I I never got taught Christianity or any. Never went to didn't. Never went to church. I've been, I mean, I've been to church three or four times in my life just to go to like weddings and stuff. Um, never, never attended a normal service, anything like that. Um, it was never a part of my life. And then, uh, 2016, some personal stuff happens. I end up going into pretty deep depression, um, end up getting severe, severe Trump derangement syndrome. Um, it sort of breaks in 2018, uh, towards the end of the year. I think I read Milo Yiannopoulos' book called Dangerous, and it kind of just woke something up inside of me where I kind of realized, man, fuck this shit. I hate this shit so much. Why am I putting up with this? Because I kind of had Trump derangement syndrome, but also I didn't. That makes sense. There's also there's really degrees of it. Um, I saw Milo somewhere, and the guy was just hilarious. And there are some people who have such severe progressive derangement that they can't laugh at something that's funny. And Milo is hilarious. And I never was so deranged. I thank God that I could never that I wouldn't laugh at something that was funny. Um, and I kind of started after that trying to figure out why the hell I had gotten so brainwashed. Uh, I read a lot of stuff about psychology, read a bunch of books. Um, the ones that were kind of the most influential on me was, uh, let me make sure that my recording, I switched to a different audio filter, so this might not, the audio might get screwed up. Anyway, um, and if you're, I, I'm anticipating that there are going to be a bunch of people who watch this who don't know me elsewhere. So most of what I talk about is math, uh, and math has kind of become my religion, which I think is pretty non-pathological. I think math is a pretty good... If I'm going to study something religiously and... Re reli so anyway, let me finish my story about... Um, I started trying to figure out how the hell I had gotten so brainwashed, and really they're kind of... I read so much. I read so many books about psychology and about... And there are kind of three that stick out to me. Number one was called The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt. Um, now, I don't recommend Haidt anymore. And it's not because his books are bad. Uh, it's because he's become a global homo shill. And I can't, I can't in good conscience recommend that people give him money. Uh, fuck Jonathan Haidt. Um, number two... Uh, Kahneman and Tversky, what's it called? Thinking Fast and Slow. That's a really, really good one. If you read any hypnosis book, they all kind of arrive at the same conclusion regarding the mental model of how humans think, which is basically we're 90% irrational and we're only rational if we pay attention. And rationality is expensive. And, um, and slow. This has changed a lot of my because I was trying to understand how I had become so brainwashed, so I started reading about brainwashing and bra reading about cults and stuff like that. Um, and I, it changed, really what changed my, the whole way I look at the world was uh, reading Nassim Taleb. Now, my background is mathematics. Um, I'm a mathematician by trade, um, and so most of the stuff on my channel is me, like, reading math textbooks. That Literally, that's what it is. Um, Literally, no, no exaggerate. Like here, right now, let me go. And it's also programming stuff. But um, I'm a shitty programmer, and I'm 
I'm also a shitty mathematician, but I'm much better at math than I am at programming. It used to be the opposite. So maybe if I just kind of like iteratively jump one over the other. Anyway, um, so that's my personal history. The, I have literally never read the Bible. Um, I So I watched, when I was doing that autistic research deep dive, what, what I ended up at is a sort of kind of unusual set of ideas that I had, that I've that I, up until last year, had never met anybody who could even understand what the hell I was saying. It changed my perspective on everything so much. Uh, reading Nassim Taleb, Nassim Taleb's views, his, one of his mentors was Benoit Mandelbrot, who was a mathematician who was famous for inventing... He invented the term fractal. Uh, the concept of fractals dates back to... Ah, um, oh, fuck, what's his name? Julia is one of them. So, beginning of the 20th century, Julia was a mathematician. He lost his nose in World War I, and so he, most of his work on, if you've heard of it, Julia Set. Um, oh, damn it. Who was the other guy? He's a really big deal. He's a really big name in math. Fatou. Fatou. Fatou and Julia. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. F-A-T-O-U. Um, F-A-T-O-U to Julia to Mandelbrot to Taleb. There's kind of a linear intellectual heritage there. Um, the Muslims sort of take pick up where the Greeks left off, hand it over um, after the European Dark Ages end, hand it over to um, Fibonacci really starts the mathematical renaissance in Europe, uh, or kind of gets kicks Europe into gear, and really it doesn't get up into gear until 1600, which is um, really Descartes and Newton are the ones who really get shit going. Um, the peak of European mathematics is um, the 19th century, where you have the names Gauss, Riemann, Lejeune, Dirichlet, Dedekind. They're all at one university in Germany called Göttingen. Um, and then the wheels really come off the wagon at the end of the 19th century. Um, uh, I think David Hilbert dies in like 1905. And after that, mathematics has just been a total shit show. You've gotten some really cool stuff since then. Shannon's insights into um, information theory that comes in the 20th century. Most of 20th century mathematics is absolute garbage. Shannon is an exception. Uh, really, really getting some insights into linear algebra. That was another thing that comes out of the 20th century. Other than that, pretty much everything from the 20th century is garbage. Um, and that, that extends beyond mathematics. Um, pretty much every idea from the 20th century is total garbage, and we, we should just write that century off in history. Anyway, uh, none of that has anything to do with the Bible. Well, it has a lot to do with the Bible, because I'm, I'm trying to tell you the uh, perspective that I'm approaching this out is I'm, is I, I'm trying to correct a deficiency in my knowledge. And um, anyway... So, um, I've, I've, I watched Jordan, so my background for the Bible, I mean, I was raised in a Western, I mean, I was raised in India, but, uh, kind of with Western influence in India, of course, um, read, um, what was I going to say? So kind of from a, in a Christian influence society, so, so a lot of these ideas are probably just baked into me accidentally. Um, and, you know, you kind of hear, you, you figure out basic things from the Bible, but I never read it, never went to church. Um, I did read, I watched, uh, when I was doing my autistic deep dive, I watched uh, Jordan Peterson's Bible lectures, and that, they really kind of changed my perspective on this, because I still had the atheism retardation idea that, that Christians were just insane, and it was like, who the fuck believes this shit? And, well, one idea that with entropism that you get, and this comes from Shannon's work, um, but really more the work of Huffman, Komogorov, uh, is this idea that compression is really fundamental, that you need to be able to, um, to make decisions quickly, even if they're approximate decisions. And... Um, <clears throat> And what I realized is that religions are what provide people with the ability to make good, approximate, good, fast decisions. And and it and it and it's so much. In in a sense, uh, religion, 
a well-designed religion, especially one that survived the test of time, um, if you kind of apply the evolutionary idea to uh, ide the evolutionary Darwin's ideas to imagining selective pressure on ideas, well, gee, a religion, a religion that's been around for thousands of years, probably has a better chance of. There's, there's got to be, there's, there's something I say, which is anything that's popular, there's something to it. Um, so there's got, there's, it, it was kind of Peterson pointing out, hey, you know, it's kind of foolish to disregard this thing that organized society for thousands of years. Um, and it is, it is foolish. Um, so I've read, I watched his Bible lectures, which I thought were excellent. They were excellent. And um, I've read like half of Genesis. I did that a while ago. And the Bible, I mean, you can probably read it a thousand times and every time you're going to learn something new. So I've read parts of Genesis, like half of Genesis. Um, other than that, the story, it's going to be completely new to me. So the first half of Genesis I've kind of read before. Um, but it's good to review because I haven't touched it in a while. I was going to... Um, Anyway, let's get started. Um, from what I've read, I like the verbiage of the King James Version better. It just is more poetic, uh, but then I can't understand it, so maybe we'll flip between these two. So, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, maybe let me... Here we go. This is a website called Bible Hub, which has all the different versions of the Bible. Um, the King James Version is public domain at this point, right? The New International Version, I think, is um, still in copyright. But it's here publicly, so... I don't know. Uh, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. What does this mean? Was hovering over the water. Okay. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. I've got to remember to avoid putting stuff in the bottom right corner. Here, I'll put this, I'll put it over here. Um, and the evening and the morning were the first day. I do have a print, I do have a couple print copies of the Bible. And I, I just have such a hard time, like, physically reading printed books. And so, the second day, so the first day was light. The second day was firmament. Okay. What does firmament mean? What is it? So that's six. Okay. What is... Well, I, some of this old terminal, I'll, I'll figure it out. And God said, let there... Does firmament, I think, mean sky? You know, I was... So uh, a friend of mine, Craig Cannon, so Craig was... I, I think I mentioned this. Uh, until middle of last year, I had never met anybody who had come to the same conclusions about entropism that I had. I hadn't called it entropism. And I talked to Craig, and the reason we hit it off is because we had both arrived at these completely independently. Like, you know, my background is being a math nerd, and his background is he was in U.S. Army Special Forces. And so very, very different background. Could not have more different backgrounds. Um, well, actually, we could, because we were both uh, programmers in these kind of weird programming languages. And so we had a lot of um, common talk, com common interest in that regard. Um, <clears throat> anyway, what was I going to say? Oh, he had an interesting point, which is that uh, the story in Genesis is the only accurate religious, is the only religious history which even comes close to the... Uh, scientifically correct, well, whatever scientifically correct means, but the, uh, I got I can't even stand the term consensus anymore, because consensus is just whole, never mind. Um, 
the the whatever the scientific view about how um, galaxies form. Genesis is pretty close, actually. Um, so what I'm also interested in is that I don't think Christianity is a is a is a um, I think Christianity has sort of been failing slowly since the Enlightenment, and uh, I kind of want to understand why, and also figure out how to how to kind of salvage it in a way that works, if that makes sense. I'm not necessarily talking about salvaging Christianity, but salvaging the structure, at least, that Christianity built, which is currently being undermined by communists. Um, Anyway, and God said, so for, for a minute, anyway, I had a real question about this, which was um, divide the waters from the waters. And I thought that was strange. Why is it calling the sky one of the waters? Um, okay, wait, no, God called the fault sky. I gotta read the New International Version just because I, I I can understand it's written in straightforward modern English. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault. I'm trying to okay from the water above it. Maybe there's so much to read. So God called the vault sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. Okay. Third day dry ground. I like the I like these headers because it's like okay, and God said, "Let the waters under the heaven heaven means sky okay be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear. Why is it italicized? Huh. The dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, oh boy, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass. And herb yielding seed after I, I'm already lost. Let me go read the other one. And God said, "Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place, and let the dry ground appear." And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and the gathered waters He called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, "Let the land produce vegetation, seed bearing plants, and trees on the land." that bear fruit with seed in it according to their, to, to their various kinds, and it was so. The land produced vegetation. Plants bear... I don't know why I'm not following this. Okay, let, let, maybe I need to zoom out. This is a problem. If you watch my other reading stuff where I'm reading like math textbooks, um, this is a thing I need to do all the time is that I like read a paragraph at a time and I can't I can't read when it's super zoomed in. Okay. Let me let me do this. Ah, that's so annoying. Ah, all right. Maybe There we go. Okay, so let, he wants the water under the sky to be gathered and let the dry ground... Okay, God called the dry ground land and the gathered waters he called... All right, God saw that it was good. And then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the con... Okay, so God makes the plants. All right. The land produces vegetation. The other reason I'm reading this is, I mean, number one, history is a big problem... Like, I just don't know enough about history, and this is probably the best way to learn about kind of the, whatever, the history of the ancient, the cradle of civilizations, at least the best accounts of it. And, um, I mean, I, it's the greatest classic. 
And I am going to tr read it all the way through, literally start to finish. Um, anyway. God saw that it was good. Trees, okay, so he, he makes plants, basically. There was evening and morning the third day. Okay, let me read that in the King James Version. Okay. God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so, and the God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. Okay. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth the grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good, and the evening and the morning were the third day. Okay. Fourth day, sun, moon, stars. And God said, let there be light. <coughs> Move this over here, sorry. Okay. Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times. Oops. The days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give them light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the light. Okay, so the sun and the moon. Ah. Okay, now I start. I meant to. That's why I got confused, because I was reading different versions. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days for years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule... Okay, so the sun and the moon and the stars. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. The fifth day. Fish and birds. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, hath life, and the fowl that may... So, birds. Fish and birds. Okay. That may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. I already like this book. Like this, it, For some reason, there's something like magical when you read this book, where it, um, it just like, it makes me, it, it puts a weird feeling in my head that I don't ever have reading anything else. Except like really, really good math books, I kind of. Uh, no, it's not even that. It's like a hypnotic feeling. It was. It's. I don't know. I'm sure. I'm sure this is why Christians know exactly what I mean. But or Christians and Jews, I guess this is the Old Testament. So, six day. Creatures on land. And God said, "Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing." What does creeping thing mean? That means okay. And it was so, and God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after... What does beast mean? Wild animals, lives... Okay, cattle means lives... Okay. Livestock according to their kinds, and all the creatures that move along the ground, that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creepeth, creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, 
and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of, oh boy, is the fruit of a tree yielding, so what, what is this one? 29. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the, let me move this up, sorry, on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit with seed on it, they will be yours for food. Okay. Let me. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To, to you it shall be for meat, and to every... Okay. I give you every seed bearing plant, Okay, so plants are for food. That's what it's saying. Okay, that's interesting. Meat gets translated to food over here. And to all the beasts of the earth, okay, and to every beast of the earth, I like the verbiage in King James better, and every fowl of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And I'm guessing the seventh day is holy, and that's why I, I vaguely remember that last time I read this. This is good. Um, I started... So, one the reason I'm doing this, really, it's not... Um, it's not for like publicity. It's because um, I the same reason I do the math reading. Number one, I, I guess the math reading probably helps some people. Um, but the reason I do this, um, the reason I do it is mostly for me because I can kind of keep track of. I can go look and say, oh, I haven't read that book in two months. I got to go get back into it. And then with a lot of books, especially the math books. There's so much like context that gets built up, like so much structure that gets built up while you're reading it. And if you don't read it for two months, you forget everything. And so if I have a video of me doing like rubber duck debugging while I'm reading it, um, it helps a lot. I am really worried I'm going to get like the copyright people are going to come after me. Um, but I, I don't I don't think they will. But um, I mean, and I've got a good fair use case. But anyway, the Bible is... Bible has to be, I mean, maybe the New International Version isn't, but I'm just looking at a website, so that's not, anyway. The King James Version is absolutely public domain, so I don't mind reading the King James Version. But I might do, I do have a print, I have a print copy of both of these, and so maybe, maybe what I will do is keep the, keep the, I did, just for copyright reasons, not put, I don't know. Anyway, um... Yeah, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. I kind of want to read more of this, but I, I think one chapter per video is good. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.